there's a, a recording this so this is currently a live stream happening on TikTok. but welcome to the youtube audience um god bless you guys please stay for bible reading as we're going to spend some time in the word today um it's going to be good we're going to spend another uh we're going to spend reading another five chapters in the book of acts it's going to be acts chapter 19 to 23 um, but just five chapters a day in the new testament is really powerful really beneficial really fruitful if we apply that to our lives amen glory to god well great to have you guys as well watching from tiktok if you guys watching in from tiktok welcome welcome and uh we are gonna uh, open up in prayer soon get started we're gonna leave the the prayer requests and all that more for later so we have more time to uh, take up prayer requests but we're going to focus on the word of god um first of course uh chad welcome to the live my friend my brother in christ how are you doing chad i see you sent some messages i'll certainly get to them later on but uh how are you doing chad welcome to the live man and that goes for all of you guys welcome and how are you all doing i hope and trust you guys are well if you need prayer though let me know like i said we'll do more of the prayer request thing later on so that we can focus more on the word of god sometimes we do get a little carried away um and we don't end up reading the word of god that soon um but also then again i just want to let the let the holy spirit have his way if he wants to uh do discussions now and word later or word now and discussions later it's really all up to him so i just want to flow with the holy spirit as well but talking about that we're gonna we're gonna pray nonetheless um real soon amen amen glory to god so let's open up in prayer right now we'll get straight into the word then um a little while after um amen let's pray heavenly father god we come before you right now in the name of jesus father we thank you for this live stream lord that your word can be spoken today to people to me lord i pray that as we hear your word today that we will grow in you grow in faith as your word says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the message of Christ, by the word of God. We thank you, Lord. We ask you that you'd help us to become more aware of the living and active power of your word as we become doers of the word, not only hearers only. Lord, I just pray that you bring in the right people to hear tonight. In Jesus' name, Lord, we bless your name. We give you the glory, Father, all the praise and the honor. And we thank you, Jesus, that you have complete permission and access to have your way on this life. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd bring to us wisdom, revelation, and understanding of the scriptures, the rhema word of God, as well as the logos. But let us be changed by your word today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen awesome guys so do tap the screen and share the live to bring in people to hear the word uh if you want to but um yeah we're gonna take up the prayer request like i said more later on that's when we spend that's when we have more time to spend in the chat uh during bible reading the chat is off but i will nonetheless pray for flower girl uh you need a change in your life well you need jesus in your life and i pray in jesus name for an encounter flower girl that you will have encounters with jesus and that jesus will just show up in your life in a mighty way that will bring that change that you need in your life in jesus name amen great cool so let's get into the word and uh we will continue with the chat later on amen acts chapter 19 is what we're going to start out with and then we're going to 
go through to chapter 23. Amen. Okay. So, Acts chapter 19 from the, uh, from the New King James Version. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about twelve in all. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. Tyrannus, uh, Tyrannus yeah. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jews, exorcists, took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise, uh, we ex exercise okay this this might sound a bit weird but it's it's the act of casting out a demon um but it's i believe it's pronounced as exercise but it's not exercises in lifting weights or to exercise a practice or something it is um the act of casting out a demon exercise Ex uh, we exercise you by the jesus whom paul preaches also, there were seven sons of Sceva, or Sceva, could be either, I'm sorry, a, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded this became known both to all jews and greeks dwelling in ephesus and fear fell on them all and the name of the lord jesus was magnified and many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time there arose a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named uh, Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of 
Diana brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear and uh, moreover you see and hear that not only at Ephesus but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned many, uh, turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, a uh, disrepute, sorry, but also the temple of the great goddess. Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship. Now when they heard this they were full of wrath and cried out saying great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord having seized Gaius and Aristarchus Macedonians Paul's travel companions. And when Paul wanted to go in to the people, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the officials of Asia, who were in, uh, not in, sorry, who were his friends, sent to him, pleading that he would not venture into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and most of them did not know why they had come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they had found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Zeus? Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you have brought these men here, who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and they are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. For we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar, there being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering and when he had said these things he dismissed the assembly and that's the end of chapter 19 in the book of acts but we see here a very important noticeable thing with what happens when people come together in a way that's worshiping a false god a false goddess there was disorder and there was confusion and uh, that's purely what Satan wants you to live in is disorder and confusion. Satan causes the chaos and that's why we should be wise to the schemes of Satan watching out for these things and knowing that God is a God of order. He's a God of justice. Um, and uh, we need order in the church. We need order in our homes. We need order in our lives. We need clarity. Amen. Now, things don't always go the way we expect, but it doesn't mean things are out of order. That's also one thing we must understand that if things are not in order the way we think they should be, it doesn't mean that um, God is not in what you are believing for. Uh, you're be believing for freedom. 
you're believing for a new car, a new house or a new job, uh, you are believing for guidance and, and sometimes things happen in a way that doesn't make sense. But the way God works is always orderly. God knows every step as the Bible says in Isaiah 60, 22. God will hasten it in its time. You know, everything has a time and God knows the timetable of everything. He knows everything that is written in your book in heaven about your life on earth. And so God will not want you to jump ahead of the gun, jump ahead of the plan that God has for you. God doesn't want you to put the cart before the horse because everything has its time so follow God's order um, and the way we do that is simply by trust and discernment we discern what we are to do in each season some seasons we are not to work some seasons we are to work some some seasons we are to really dig deep maybe go to Bible college start learning and then the next season God will um, push us through a another adventure another journey into a new season because of the equipping that took place in the previous seasons that you were obedient in as the bible also says i believe somewhere um obedience is better than sacrifice so always trusting god and obeying him with the discernment that comes from the holy spirit you will know what to do in every season at every moment see like even me i have this big picture of the future of like what i i see could possibly happen but you know i shouldn't even think about those things but rather just say lord i i don't know everything i'm not the alpha and the omega god is the alpha and the omega he's seen the end from the beginning and he knows what my tomorrow looks like the bible even says don't even worry about tomorrow uh, for today has enough trouble of its own so uh trust faith and doing what god tells you to do today amen so uh yeah it takes faith and that's why faith without works is dead because you're not just going to sit there and hoping you know everything's going to fall into place you're putting your faith into action by doing with what god has given you to do and doing what god tells you to do in every season amen like before i continue i just want to say this if you feel like you meant for more in life you feel like you in this position in your life you're in a job or you maybe at home and you don't even have a job and you just feel like you you are more than this why are you here down here you are more than this of course you are let god let god uh, bring you up let god prepare you for the great things that he has for you god's word says no one knows what god has prepared for us who love god amen so um God has amazing things in store for us as long as we just trust him trust his word amen and live in obedience amen anyway all right acts chapter 20 now let's uh let's read and welcome to those who recently joined in to the live stream so this is acts chapter 20 now after the uproar had ceased Paul called the disciples to himself, embraced them, and departed to go to Macedonia. For those who don't know, this is from the New King James Version, by the way. So verse 2. Now when he had gone over that region and encouraged them with many words, he came to Greece and stayed three months. And when the Jews plotted against him as he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. And so Pater of Berea accompanied him to Asia, also Aristarchus and Secundus of the Thessalonians, and Gaius of Derby, and Timothy, and Ty Tychicus, and Tromphemus of Asia. These men going ahead waited for us at Troas. But we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread 
and in five days joined them at Troas, where we stayed seven days. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together, and in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down, fell on him, and embraced him, and said, uh, and embraced him, embracing him, said, Do not trouble yourselves, for he, uh, his life is in him. Now when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. And they brought the young man in alive, and they were not a little comforted. Huh. Wow, praise God. Then we went ahead to the ship and sailed to Assos, there attending to take Paul on board, for so he had given orders, intending himself to go on foot. And when he met us at Assos, we took him on board and came to Miltalin. We sailed from there, and the next day came opposite Chios, or Chios. The following day we arrived at Samos and stayed at uh, Trogilium. Trogilium. Yeah, I hope I'm saying that right. I think I might not be saying that right. The next day we came to Miletus, or Maltus, that's also one I'm not sure. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus, so that he would not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. From Maltus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church, and when they had come to him, he said to them, you know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from the house, uh, sorry, and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, uh, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy, and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of, gr of the grace of God." Now Paul is one of the greatest examples of how we need to be for Jesus. No matter what people do to us, no matter how persecuted we get, no matter how many trials we have to go through, no matter how many hardships we have to go through, we'll do anything for the Lord Jesus. We will do anything to obey the Holy Spirit in where He is guiding us. And uh, can, can we say yes to that? Can we give our lives in such a way that no matter what happens, we will always follow Jesus? That, that will be tested in us, of course, if we are called for that to, to minister in such a way. Not everyone, of course, will do that. But um, God has called you guys and me to, to do a certain job. We all have our own job that we've been called to do, right? And um, the, the, the question is, how far are we willing to go to preach Jesus? Um, not that we are to look for trials. We are not to look for suffering. We are not to look for persecutions. We are to rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life and give our lives up completely to Jesus, denying ourselves 
daily taking up our cross and following Jesus. Amen. So important. All right, guys. So verse 25 now in uh, Acts chapter 20. And indeed, now I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have converted no one silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my, necess uh, for my necessities and for those who were with me. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more, and they accompanied him to the ship. So what's cool here as well is that um, it says that Paul, right? Paul knelt down and prayed with them all. This verse, which is... Acts 20 verse 36 explains that there are ways we can pray. The way Jesus teaches us to pray is a personal type of prayer where we go before God and we pray to our Father who is in heaven in secret, our Father who art in heaven, right? But when we are praying in the presence of others, it's also for their benefit in the hearing of the prayer. That their faith is stirred, that their emotions and experience is in line with, with the truth together with one accord. And there's power in that. So prayer in public has its place and time. Prayer in secret has its place and time. There are different ways we can pray, but prayer itself is communication to God, whether we do it as a congregation or personally. Personally is i would say the most important kind of prayer always to pray personally not for yourself the whole time of course you pray for your things that you need pray for yourself but praying as as a growing in the relationship you have with the lord jesus that intimacy where you pray and you speak to him and then you remain quiet as well at times you remain quiet and let him speak to you as well that's how a relationship works is that you speak to someone and, and you receive a response to them. How would you feel if, uh, like, how would you feel if you went on a date? Like, say you're a guy and you went on a date with your girlfriend and you were the only one who was speaking. Um, or she was the only one who, who is speaking. It wouldn't work out. You would eventually lose interest in that person. So that's why it's not like God will lose interest in us. He is always interested in us. He's always jealous for us. But when we speak to God, because it's a relationship, we need to listen to what He is telling us. So that's why He speaks to us. God speaks to us through His Word. He speaks to us in many different ways. But even in prayer time, when we're praying and we're having that quiet time with the Lord, we can just say, Lord, I, I'm here, Lord. What do you want to tell me today? What do you want to do? How are you doing, Father, today? How are you feeling and this one time I actually was praying myself and God actually showed me how he's feeling. And it was quite, 
quite uh, painful because God was showing me his heart on how sad it is for those who reject God. Like God has given his life for us. He sent his son Jesus. He give, he's given his everything for us. And um, Jesus, his heart goes out for the lost. But the lost keep on rejecting him, willingly rejecting him. And because of that, you know, Jesus can't do anything for them, but it breaks his heart that he can't do anything for them. And it happened twice where God showed me his heart. And then I was spending time with Jesus and Jesus also did the same thing for me. He showed me his heart. So, um, you know, these things can happen when you really get into his presence and you really have that intimacy with him. So, yeah, um, there it is, guys. That's the end of chapter 20. But um, it's good word, guys. And um glory to God for for uh, his word guys amen so we're gonna go to Acts chapter 21 and uh, we're gonna read up to chapter 23 so we still got uh, three more chapters yeah three more chapters to read okay Acts 21 now it came to pass that when we had departed from them and set sail running a straight course we came to Kos the following day to Rhodes and from there to Patara and finding a ship sailing over Phoenicia we went aboard and set sail when we had sighted Cyprus we passed it on the left sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre for there the ship was to unload her cargo and finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. See, even back in those days, ships were classic, were um, referred to as uh, a her, like um, referred to as a uh, what would be a feminine name, like a female uh, character uh, kind of um, saying that's been around. So, yeah. Um, ships are always referred to as hers as uh as a, a feminine name so um for there the ship was to unload her cargo and finding disciples we stayed there seven days they told paul through the spirit not to go up to jerusalem now this is this is something i want to um tell you guys to really keep note of keep note i'm going to read this again for you and keep note of this okay um uh, disciples right disciples believers holy spirit filled christians okay and finding disciples we stayed there seven days they told paul they told paul through the spirit so it wasn't their own ideas that they came up with telling paul the specific thing But it was through the Holy Spirit that they told Paul through the Spirit not to go up to Jerusalem. Okay, keep this in mind. That's a very important lesson to learn from what we are about to read. Okay, let's continue. When we had come to the end of those days, we departed and went on our way and they all accompanied us with wives and children till we were out of the city and we knelt down on the shore and prayed when we had taken our leave of one another we boarded the ship and they returned home and when we had finished our voyage from Tyre we came to uh, Ptolemus or Ptolemaeus greeted the brethren and stayed with them one day on the next day we who were paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of philip the evangelist who was one of the seven and stayed with him and stayed with him now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And and when he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, 
bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. So we see a second time now there's a warning to pull specifically from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave this prophet Agabus, prophet Agabus, the word and he demonstrated what would happen to Paul. This prophet took Paul's belt and he bound himself with uh, he bound his his hands, okay? And he said, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt, which is Paul, and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. This is a stern warning coming now a second time to Paul. Let's see what happens. Now when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then again, there was a third warning. Then Paul answered, this is now Paul speaking. Okay, Paul the Apostle, a great man of God, who wrote the epistles, right? Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? Breaking what? My heart. What does the Bible say about the heart? Jeremiah uh, 17 and verse 9, it says that the heart is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked who can know it. We can't always trust our heart. It is the most deceitful. It's, it's deceitful above all things. So many times we've been really destroyed, heartbroken and disappointed because our hearts deceived us. We had expectations. We had desires in our own hearts. But our ways are not God's ways. Even Paul the Apostle had this in his heart to do this. It was his idea, right? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So obviously, it sounds like he has pure intention. It sounds like he's really wanting to do the right thing, that he'll do anything for Jesus, which is a good heart. He has a good heart at, in, in, in that, right? But there was an instruction from the Holy Spirit not to go this specific time. Do not go to Jerusalem. So when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. All right. And after those days, we packed and went up to Jerusalem. Also, some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us and brought them, uh, brought with them a certain nation of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we were to lodge. And when we had come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. When he had greeted them, he told in detail those things which God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many myriads of Jews there are who have believed, and they are all zealous for the law. But they have been informed about you that you teach all the Jews who are coming, uh, not coming, who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, nor to walk according to the customs. What, what then? The assembly must certainly meet. For they will hear that you have come. Therefore do, what we have, uh, therefore do what we tell you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Take them and be purified with them. And pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. And that all may know that those things of which they were informed concerning you are nothing. But that you yourself also walk orderly and keep the law. But concerning the Gentiles who believe, we have written and decided that they should observe no such thing except that they should keep themselves from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, having been purified with them, 
entered the temple to announce the expiration of the days of purification, at which time an offering should be made for each one of them. Now when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people, the law, and this place. And furthermore, he also brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Tromphimus, the Ephesian, with him in the city, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was disturbed, and the people ran together, seized Paul, and dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. Now as they were seeking to kill him, news came to the commander of the garrison that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains. And he asked who he was and what he had done. So now the prophecy from prophet Agabus through the Holy Spirit has come to pass. Paul is now bound with two chains. He is bound as the prophet Agabus spoke through the Holy Spirit, through what the Holy Spirit told him to, to speak. And so this is what we are seeing happen right now. This is what Paul was warned about, not to go to Jerusalem unless if he does he will be bound and so but he went out of his own ideas because he thought it was a good idea now we see this happen throughout the bible as well look at for example um uh abraham and sarah um uh, they were given a covenant well god gave abraham a covenant he made a covenant with Abraham. He changed his name from Abram to Abraham because Abraham was going to be the father of many nations. He was the father of many nations. But he was with no child. So they ran ahead thinking to do a good thing to have a child by Sarah's maidservant Hagar because Sarah was barren. So they birthed a child. His name was Ishmael. This was not God's plan. And so God still had a plan for Abraham and Sarah. And it was not until Abraham was, I think, a hundred years old that Isaac was born to him. Uh, he was a hundred or a hundred and one. I think it was about a hundred. And, and Isaac was born to him. Sarah, in her old age, gave birth to Isaac. That was God's plan. Yes, it took a long time, but God knew what he was doing. And so even though things may seem good to do, rather wait on the Lord first, do it prayerfully and trust what God has promised to you. Trust in the fact that when God has promised you something, he will bring it to pass. Amen. So I hope I hope um, we are learning something from this tonight. Okay. And some among the multitude cried one thing and some another. So he was bound with two chains and asked who he was and what he had done. Okay, so let's continue on to the next chapter. That's the end of uh, chapter. Hang on, it's not the end. Do give me grace. Um, that was verse 34. We're going to go on to continuing in verse 34 and on to verse 40 actually sorry guys still chapter um 21 okay so when he could not ascertain the uh not ascertain the truth because of the tumult he commanded him to be taken into the barracks when he reached the stairs he had to be carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob for the multitude of the people followed after crying out away with him then as Paul was about to be led into the barracks, he said to the commander, May I speak to you? He replied, Can you speak Greek? Are you not the Egyptian whom 
who some time ago stirred up a rebellion and led the 4,000 assassins out into the wilderness. But Paul said, I'm a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I implore you, permit me to speak to the people. So when he had given him permission, Paul stood on the stairs and motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great silence, he spoke to them in the Hebrew language saying, and we're going to continue that following the, the next chapter. So Acts 22 is now what we're going to be reading. Brethren and fathers, hear my defense before you now. And when they heard that he spoke to them in the Hebrew language, they kept all the more silent. Then he said, I am indeed a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictness of our father's law and was zealous toward God as you are all or as you all are today. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. Now, when it's spoken of, spoken of this way, the, this way is spoken about with a capital W, talking about Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. All right. So um, I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest bears me witness and all the council of the elders from whom I also received letters to the brethren and went to Damascus to bring in chains even those who were there to Jerusalem to be punished. Now it happened as I journeyed and came near Damascus at about noon, suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. So I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. And since I could know, uh, and since I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came to Damascus. Then a certain Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews who dwelt there, came to me, and he stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And, excuse me, and at that same hour I looked up at him, and, uh, not and, then he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you, that you should know his will, and see the just one and hear the voice of his mouth for you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard and now why are you waiting arise and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the lord now it happened when i returned to jerusalem and was praying in the temple that i was in a trance and saw him saying to me Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, for they will not receive your testimony concerning me. So I said, Lord, they know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believe on you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then he said to me, Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. And they listened to him until this word, and then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Then as they cried out and tore off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks and said that he should be examined under scourging so that he might know why they shouted so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the commander, saying, Take care 
what you do for this man is a Roman. Then the commander came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? He said, Yes. The commander answered, With a large sum I obtained the citizenship. And Paul said, But I was born a citizen. Then immediately those who were about to examine him withdrew from him, and the commander was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. The next day, because he wanted to know for certain why he was accused by the Jews, he released him from his bonds and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them. And that's the end of chapter 22. We're going to read one more chapter tonight in the book of Acts, which is Acts chapter 23. And this is Acts chapter 23 now. Then Paul, looking earnestly at the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. For you sit to judge me according to the law. And do you command me to be struck contrary to the law? And those who stood by said, Do you revile God's high priest? Then Paul said, I do not know, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, You shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, concerning the hope and resurrection of the dead. I am being judged. And when he had said this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, and no, and no angel or spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. Then there arose a loud outcry, and the scribes of the Pharisees' party rose and protested, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. Now when there arose a great dissension, the commander, fearing lest Paul might be pulled into pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them and bring him into the barracks. But the following night the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. So, now, we have seen that the Holy Spirit told Paul specifically, warned him time and time again, do not go to Jerusalem. And he went to Jerusalem. What uh, the Holy Spirit spoke through Prophet Agabus, that he would be bound, did happen to him. So things happened to him and he was beaten. He was beaten with rods, I believe, and he was really uh, not in the right place. But he still nonetheless did good things testifying to Jesus. So the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul, for for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. So God still had mercy on him. You know, so even if you've made a mistake of you, you've walked through the wrong door. Don't think that you've messed up completely. Don't think now that you don't have any more chance to come back and to do the right thing because you messed up once. No, God has grace as long as we come back into alignment with obedience to the Holy Spirit, obedience to the Lord. Amen. Also with Ishmael, Abraham and Sarah uh, birthed Ishmael by Hagar, who Sarah gave to Abraham as wife. So Ishmael was born, but Ishmael was still blessed. Even though Ishmael was not God's plan, Ishmael wasn't killed. Ishmael was still blessed because he came from the seed of Abraham. But he, Ishmael wasn't God's chosen people. Isaac was because Isaac then had a son Jacob and Jacob had 12 sons which were the 12 tribes of Israel and that was God's plan and that's where the Jews come from the Jews come from the 12 tribes of Israel 
they are God's chosen people. Um, of course, now because of Jesus, the Gentiles like me, I'm not born a Jew. I'm not a Jew by blood. But because of the grace of God and because of what Jesus did, I can also be saved and I can be grafted in. And glory to God for that, right? But there it is, guys. The Lord spoke to him. And so that's it. If you feel like you've messed up or you feel like you've taken the wrong path in your life, you feel like, you know, you really messed up, don't be discouraged, but be of good cheer. God can still use you. Just submit to him. Repent. Submit to him and he will guide you. Commit your ways to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Amen. And when it was day, some of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. What a terrible thing to say. For the Jews to say that they have bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. That just sounds to me like a lot of hate which is not right of course they didn't have jesus they didn't have the holy spirit that's why they 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 were filled with envy and jealousy and hatred in their hearts it was just not from god saying that they would neither eat or nor drink till they had killed paul now there were more than 40 who had formed this conspiracy even imagine 40 people coming together in the same uh oath under the same oath wow they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves with, uh, we have bound ourselves under a great oath that we will eat nothing until we have killed Paul. Now you, therefore, together with the council, suggest to the commander that he be brought down to you tomorrow as though you were going to make further inquiries concerning him. But we are ready to kill him before he comes near. I mean, come on, really? Do they hate him that much? So when Paul's sister's son heard of their ambush, he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions to him and said, Take this young man to the commander, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the commander and said, Paul the prisoner called me to him and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to say to you. Then the commander took him by the hand, went aside and asked privately, What is it that you have to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to ask that you bring Paul down to the council tomorrow as though they were going to inquire more fully about him. But do not yield to them, for more than 40 of them lie in wait for him men who have bound themselves by an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him and now they are ready waiting for the promise from you so the commander let the young man depart and commanded him tell no one that you have re uh, tell no one that you have revealed these things to me And he called for two centurions, saying, Prepare two hundred soldiers, two hundred soldiers, imagine. Prepare two hundred soldiers, seventy horsemen, and two hundred spearmen to go to Caesarea at the third hour of the night, and provide mounts to set Paul on and bring him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter in the following manner. Claudius Lysias, to the most excellent governor Felix. Greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them. Coming with the troops, I rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman. And when I wanted to know the council, uh, not the council, sorry. And when I wanted to know the reason they accused him, I brought him before their council. I found out that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but had nothing charged against him deserving of death or chains and when he was told me and and when it was told me that the jews lay in wait for the man i sent him immediately to you and also commanded his accusers to state before you the charges against him farewell 
Then the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. The next day they left the horsemen to go on with him and returned to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea and had delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. And when the governor had read it, he asked what province he was from. And when he understood that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will hear you when your accusers also have come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's paratorium. All right, and that's the end of chapter 23. We're going to read chapter 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. I think that will be the last five chapters. So we will plan to, to do that tomorrow night. But there it is, guys. Good reading tonight. Learned a few things. I hope that some of you guys learned some things as well. And uh, there it is. So, cool. Great. So, how are you guys doing? Welcome to the live. I uh, want to say thanks to uh, Megan for the heart, me and the team bracelets. Denver, thank you for the TikTok. Megan, thanks for the couple roses. Uh, Sarah with the heart, me. Olivia with the heart, me. Courtney with the heart, me. Thank you guys for that. I appreciate that. And welcome to everyone um, on the live. God bless you guys so much. And uh, yeah, glory to Jesus. Amen. Hey, uh, Rachel, welcome as well. Awesome. So yeah, guys, if you have any questions, if you have any uh, prayer requests, feel free to, to put that in the chat. Um, yeah, uh, Anastasia, glory to God. Uh, great to see that you guys were listening in today. Uh, hey, buddy, came in late. How are you doing, my friend? No worries, Richard. I'm doing well. How are you doing, Richard? No problem. So, yeah, and, and, and also what's so crazy about what we were reading about tonight and what I'm going through in my life is that I'm needing to, to be very careful to not run ahead and do anything apart from the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And, and so um, yes, it's not always easy to yield to to the Holy Spirit's voice when you so desperately want to do something because it's so passionately strong in your heart to do something you have a strong desire to do something but if it's not God's will if the Holy Spirit has told you to wait are you willing to do that and are you willing to put away how you feel to obey the Holy Spirit and that's what we can all take from tonight I believe so yeah all right but great stuff guys um i just want to pray right now pray for all of you guys as well and uh florence welcome to the live good evening to you i want to pray for you i want to just pray over this live and uh then we'll take it from there let's pray heavenly father god i thank you for this evening thank you lord for your word that we've received tonight thank you dear holy spirit for teaching us more of who you are, how to listen to you. And I pray that from this day onwards, that we will be more sensitive to your voice, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to us and we will listen to you. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will have your way on this live stream, that you'll touch the lives of the people joining tonight and even from YouTube, Lord, that you'd touch them tonight and you'd have your way on this live, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, yeah, welcome, Aurel. Well, thanks, and how are you? Uh, please pray for my son, Prince. He has a headache that doesn't want to go away. All right, let's pray for Anastasia's son, guys. Uh, that should be a small s but we're gonna pray for a uh, prince guys as uh, he has a headache that won't go away let's pray father god we pray for prince right now who's had a headache lord we just come against this headache we rebuke this headache in jesus name and we pray father for total healing and that you take away the pain from prince's head we come against all witchcraft that may have been done against him in the name of jesus we break its power by fire in jesus name and we thank you, Father, for peace in his mind, peace in his head, healing from this headache, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
Amen and Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, absolutely, we should walk according to the Holy Spirit where He leads us to. Amen, Raven. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. God bless you too, Scarleth. Uh, Florence, Florence's daughter, we will pray for her daughter, for her father, God, we pray for Florence's daughter, for her work, Lord, for the right work to come to her and that you'd bless her in that work, Father God, in Jesus name. And we just pray in Jesus name, Lord, for all delays to be broken and for the right doors to open and the wrong doors to close in Jesus name for Florence's daughter. Amen and amen. I have been tithing towards my church, but I want to help elsewhere too. Not sure where. Well, this is a great opportunity, Rachel, for you to take this to God. And, and this is a great opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you as you pray in faith, knowing that you will receive an answer and you will say, Lord, um, what must I do? Must I continue tithing? to my church because that's where that's really what the word says the word says bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house says the lord so um of course when you pay your tithe it should go to where you are receiving your spiritual food to your local church where you receive spiritual food uh church isn't always uh, in person church can also be a community a people and that's really what church is church is the people church consists of the people and not the building church building is just the building it's a gathering place but the church are the people right so yeah um but i believe that you will know what to do um amen absolutely the holy spirit will guide us to be close to god and will give us directions there it is right there richard and man i love what you're saying let's quickly go to the book of john to check something out as well that talks about who the holy spirit is so in the book of john um it says let me just find it real quick give me a second or two um I think it could be in verse 14. Okay. Uh, John 14 verse 15 and so on. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father that he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will also live. Uh, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Wow, praise God. So, um, yeah, so we see that the Holy Spirit, he is another comforter apart from when Jesus one was on the earth. Jesus was a comfort to his disciples. The disciples, I believe, always felt safe with Jesus. And um, so, um, the Holy Spirit, He is our comforter and He is our helper. The Holy Spirit is a person and He is there to help us on this journey in life. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have learned a lot from you, my brother, as the Holy Spirit leading is leading you. So I have to, yeah, glory to God. Um, Raven, praise the Holy Spirit, man. We need him so much. Glorify God's mighty name. Amen, Raven. 
Hey Drago, I'm well, thank you. And how are you? Hi, Erica. I'm also attacked by witchcraft and black magic. You know what? Um, if you feel like you're still under attack from these demonic things, we can pray and speak against that. We actually break right now. We break all witchcraft from joy. In the name of Jesus, we come against all witchcraft. We come against all black magic. Every single bit of witchcraft that is left, every single bit of demonic activity, demonic items that are left, we burn it by fire in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for your holy angels, for your angels to surround joy, protecting him, and that you, Holy Spirit, will guard his heart and mind and, and guard him, Holy Spirit, into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, joy. Um, God bless you too, Agnes. Thank you. Awesome. Um, right, so, cool, guys. Glory to God. Um, yeah, witchcraft is a very real thing, and, and we've got to watch out for, for the schemes of Satan, and um, we've got to watch what music we listen to. We've got to watch what movies we are watching. We have to watch what shows we are watching. We have to be careful about these things because um, our eyes and our ears are gates, are openings to our soul. Um, if any of you are still in a position where you enjoy listening to secular music, it may be really enjoyable and fun. And I also really enjoyed listening to worldly music myself. But we need to move on from this because what is of the world is not of God. And we are called out of the world. So we have no part with it. The Bible says, what does light have to do with darkness, right? So uh, also with movies, you know, I've really had to watch the kind of movies I watch because I'm kind of a movie fanatic. I love watching movies, but I really come across certain movies that the Holy Spirit tells me straight, don't watch that movie. Um, you know, it, it has a bit of horror in it or it has a bit of nudity in it or it has a bit of, um, uh, you know, certain worldly things in it that we should stay away from. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what we should and should not should and should not do. And also you'll just get an uneasy feeling about something as well if you should not do it and not watch it. But if you consumed with the things of the world, you will not know right from wrong. You see, the Bible speaks about spiritual maturity and maturity as a Christian comes from knowing right from wrong. If you are able to distinguish between right and wrong, it shows your level of maturity as a believer. I've had to learn for many uh, different things over the years, what to watch, what not to watch, what to enjoy and what not to enjoy. Um, what to stay away from and it hasn't been easy because the flesh is always so used to um, doing certain things but if you can let the flesh be crucified let the flesh die excuse me that is when we can start to live by the holy spirit and that is not an easy thing but it's worth it and that's why sometimes we do need to be disciplined so that we can uh, let the flesh die so that we are not constantly feeding the flesh with things that are not helping our spiritual lives. God does want us to have fun and there are good movies and shows to watch. There are games you can play if you want. Um, but let it be balanced according to according to where it will not become an obsession. According to where it will not take your time away from God. According to where it will not affect your relationship with jesus i mean so yeah all right guys caleb welcome to the love how are you and you know what guys it has been a it has been a real rough journey for me personally to let go a lot of things in my life and i'm still a work in progress to to cut off everything from my life that does not need to be there and how how hard it is it is not easy but i'm telling you guys that it's so worth it to be willing to do what God has called us to do. And God isn't going to burden you with having to, um, you know, 
like drop everything in one day sometimes it will be you know um horror movies today and worldly music tomorrow or hurry horror movies this month and worldly music next month that thing that needs to be cut off from your life that's not doing you any good it may take a while it depends it really is up to you you can decide to give give it up right now but then again also if you rush into just giving something up you're going to want to go back to it as well this is what i've experienced in my own life for vaping for example i said many times you know what i'm done with this vaping i don't want anything more to do with it i would give away my vapes and like throw them throw them away but i'd always go back to it because i forced myself to be free from vaping instead of giving it to god and that's the difference if you want to be free from something that's not good for you like vaping or pornography or horror movies or um, any sort of sin if you want to be free from any of those things in your life you have you can't force your way out of it you have to submit to god you have to give it to god and let him prune you let him come in and create a new creation in you a new nature of godliness of holiness in you that no longer will you worry about going back to that sin because you you don't desire that sin anymore that's what i've had to learn the hard way as well we need to come to a position where we hate sin as much as god hates sin and that takes time sometimes it's a process of god's refining fire that burns up the darkness in our souls burns up that evil desire in our hearts that's why the flesh has to completely die when the flesh is dead it cannot move it cannot speak it cannot think it cannot uh, tell you to do anything when the flesh is dead it is dead meaning that when your flesh is completely 100 dead and crucified you will not desire sin you will not desire the things of this world because you become a new creation in christ jesus as it says we have been crucified with christ it is no longer i who live but christ in me so it does take time it is a process but it is so worth going through the refining process it is so worth actually allowing god to take you into a wilderness because he is doing something very special in your life that is going to make you flourish in the future <laughs> amen it's god has a mighty amazing plan for all of us he wants he wants the best for us he just wants us to be made holy as he is holy as he is holy that's why the bible says be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect the way we do that is by surrender and submission not by force because the bible also says it's not by might it's not by power but by my but by my spirit says the lord so it's by the flow of the holy spirit by submission to the holy spirit that we are free from worldly loving and worldly sins and worldly habits amen you know we all gotta work on it we all uh, are in this uh, same journey of becoming completely free and in the journey of crucifying the flesh we all have to do it i'm not of god you're not of god i gotta do it as much as you gotta do it as well we all gotta work on it but the way we the way we come out with victory at the end of the day is by letting god fight for you god fought for his people in the old testament you read about how god fought for his people when they surrendered to god then the people had victory for example let's look at uh, the uh um Amalekites against Joshua and his his army had a war against themselves. I think it was the Amalekites and Joshua. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, Moses had his hands raised. And the longer his hands were raised, as long as his hands were raised, then Joshua, who was part of his people, Joshua and his people were 
on the winning side. But whenever, whenever Moses' hands dropped low, then the opposing side would, would uh, win. So it had to be a submission to doing what needed to be done. Moses had to lift up his hands for them to have the victory. And it got to a point where he, he held his hands up so, for so long that he had to get people to help him. People lifted his arms up. I think it was Aaron and someone else who lifted his arms up so that they can get the win. So it's by submission and doing what needs to be done, no matter how crazy or weird or um, silly it seems, even if it doesn't make sense, do what God tells you to do. Like um, God told Moses to split the sea strike the water and split the sea just do it so Moses did that if he didn't touch the sea with his rod and if he said but Lord what are you saying how can I do that there's no ways I can split the sea but just trust God God will do it for you as long as you take that step of faith and some sometimes a step of faith is patience which means we are not having to walk to take a step of faith taking a step of faith is a spiritual term let's read quickly before i get back to the chats let's read one more scripture verse on this topic isaiah 40 verse 31 some of you guys know it most of you probably know it very well this is one of my favorite scriptures in the bible isaiah 40 and verse 31 okay it says but those but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint this is a beautiful promise from God that if we wait on the Lord and wait on him and on his promises he will come through we will be built up in strength God will exalt us if we humble ourselves, submit ourselves to Him completely. And so that's it. All right. I'm still working on being a better Jesus follower. Well, that's good. And don't stop working on it. Don't think that it's too far. Like if you look at some other people and you say, wow, I wish I had faith like that person. Don't doubt the fact that you can be even more faithful than that person. Because um, we as human beings, we're not perfect, okay? Yeah, we're going to mess up, but we are being transformed by the renewing of our minds in the process of submission to God and letting Jesus take control of your life. That's why Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and take my burden upon you so that God, Jesus can guard us think about this oxen who have a yoke upon them a burden upon them they are not their own anymore they are guarded by the person who put the yoke on them so when Jesus when we take up the yoke of Christ since Jesus asks us to take the yoke upon him up, upon us Jesus asks us if we will take his yoke upon us Jesus doesn't force his yoke upon us. We have to ask for his yoke. But guess what? What's so cool about this is that the yoke of Jesus is easy. It is easy. And his burden is light. Meaning God will not give you something that's too much for you to bear. But if you are willing to be guarded by Jesus, you're willing to be his sheep, then you will know his voice and you will follow him because you are truly a sheep of the good shepherd you are truly a, a saved born again follower of christ because of your dedication and submission commitment to jesus completely amen nothing good comes from witchcraft exactly yeah definitely important to hate sin but hating sin doesn't come also by yourself. Hating sin comes by the transformation 
with the Holy Spirit within you. When you become a new, new uh, born again believer, when you become a new creation in Christ, you've now made a decision to follow Jesus. You proclaim that Jesus is Lord. You believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You are starting a journey. You have taken it upon yourself to commit your life to Jesus so that he can come and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. He brings you new life. You are being born again. Your spirit has been brought back to life and you have a fire within you, a light shining within you. And then to get baptized by water and be baptized with the Holy Spirit as well, either order, but being baptized by the Holy Spirit and being baptized by water. Then now, as you walk, you learn. Learn the Word of God. Study the Word of God. It's taken me years to even start learning just, just of, uh, the, the, some of the basic things. It's taken me years to, to learn. And I'm still learning. We, we always can never stop learning. We can never stop learning. We can always learn more. We can always gain more understanding and, and wisdom and, and, and never stop, never have enough. But learn the Word of God so that when you are rooted, this is what Jesus teaches, when you are rooted in Him, in Jesus, because Jesus used the parable saying, the man, the foolish man built his house on a weak foundation, on the sand. And winds and waves came by and the house went down and great was its fall. It specifically says great was its fall. But when the wise person built his house on a firm foundation on the rock, who is Jesus, the word of God. Then now when the winds and the waves came by bashing and crashing on the house, the house stood firm because it had a firm foundation. That is why Jesus teaches us this through this parable so that when we receive Jesus, we are to be built on the firm foundation. If you receive Jesus and you just think you can go out and minister to people, if you receive Jesus and you just think that you can go out and be a strong Christian and you're not rooted and grounded on the word of God in Jesus Christ, then you are going to fall and great will be your fall. But if you take it day by day, reading the word of God, learning more about Jesus, you are, you are being built up in him. And guess what? That proves that you have good soil in your heart, which will produce good fruit. And the Bible says people will know you by your fruit. So also if you, uh, if I come and, and, and stay with you for a week or two, I will uh, get closer to seeing your true colors in the character, in your character, the way you respond to problems, the way you respond to offenses and hate, the way you respond to lack, the, the way you respond to all the problems in life determines how rooted and grounded you are in Jesus. Like uh, me too as well, I've had to deal with certain things that if something gets to me and annoys me I have to deal with that according to the word and so there's even more I can build on the word but that's it guys being built up firm in the word of God will keep you strong especially if you called for ministry because there will be attacks there will be persecution there will be hate against you because of Jesus because of what you believe in because of what you stand for but if you're rooted on the word of God, if you're rooted in Jesus, the rock, then you will not be shaken because you have a firm foundation. I hope this is making some sense. It's worth becoming the new person, a word, a preacher, and I like to use uh, is persevere with Christ. There it is. We are nothing and we can do nothing apart from Christ. Amen. Alvino, thank you for the heart me and the 16, uh, 13 roses there, man. All right. Cool. Great stuff, guys. I cut off myself from all distractions, including being separated from any social media. And this is really cool. And this is really good. 
but what I've learned guys is that when I do it in the flesh I always go back to it think about this this is pretty crazy and some of you guys probably know this very well from personal experience when I try and forcibly get rid of something I always go back to it like I say okay you know what I'm gonna stop looking at pornography so I'm just gonna sell my phone but you will find some other way to go look at pornography it's just it doesn't work when you cut yourself off from distractions as Sarah says it has to be done with submission to God for example we see in the old covenant when the people of God when the children of Israel were waiting for Moses to come back down from the mountain when Moses was on Mount Sinai I think it was to uh, be with the Lord and speak with the Lord the people got impatient and they made their own idols they made false gods of gold they made a golden calf out of gold and what happened is that gold had to be molten down uh, that gold had to be melted and and it it was mixed I think with dust or mixed with water and the people had to like eat it or something it was pretty crazy but you see so there's always always these consequences but you have to destroy it by submitting it so um, like that's why it says as well in James chapter 4 verse 7 you can't just resist the devil the devil will not listen to you you can resist the devil all day and he will not listen to you you have to first submit to God submit to God then resist the devil and he will flee I can tell you how I came free from vaping this is how I came free from vaping right I was vaping in my room once during the day and I never like never vape like that during the day I think my dad I think my, my dad and my brothers were out so I thought I'm gonna vape in my room during the day because I was addicted to this vaping okay I, I was mostly just doing it for the tricks I wasn't using nicotine even but still it wasn't for me it's not of Christians to do that vaping is also dangerous to your health people have really really been affected by vaping as well so anyway vaping's bad let's just agree on that so I was vaping in my room and my room was just boxed with vape it was really just packed really boxed up with vape and with the the vapor and so my mom was in the house doing the dishes or whatever and God let my eyes fall on the dustbins okay and God made me look at the dustbins outside of my window because I can see in the distance uh, the place where the dustbins go the, the place where the dustbin is um, the garbage bin and um, the big one God told me now you can continue vaping if you want to or you can take your vape and throw it away God gave me grace he gave me mercy right then and there I didn't choose to to get to part way with it I wanted to continue doing it but then God gave me a choice God said will you submit it to me or not so I said okay you know what father thank you for your grace on my life and I took the vape and I, I think I throw it, thrown it away uh, with a whole bunch of other stuff because I didn't want my mom to see so I made a choice that day to give up vaping to give it to God to obey God and that's how I came free from it is God gave me a choice and said son you choose what do you want to do with this you can choose and so I made a choice and said okay well you know what I know this is not right I know that vaping isn't probably what Christians should be doing so I give it to God and that's how I came free so if you want to be free from something if you want to be free give it to God and say Lord you know what I just I choose to give it to you you're not gonna stop doing it in the flesh but you see you don't want to force yourself away from an addiction or yourself away from a sin you want to break the desire for that sin you want to break the want for that sin you got to stop wanting that sin you can stop yourself from doing something all day but unless you get to that point where you hate that sin and you no longer desire you no longer are drawn to it it's because you've fully submitted it to God so I hope that 
that makes sense as well hey charlene thank you for the the heart me there i appreciate that so yeah cool guys uh, let me just get back and see what i'm what else i missed uh there's probably yeah there's a lot of comments i missed i'm sorry guys um all right uh, thank you jordan i know that i am an older man and sometimes worrying thank you yeah donald you're never too old to uh you know uh come come and uh learn new things and 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 get yourself back on track man get yourself back on in line with god and that's just what's so cool about god god doesn't look at your age you can be so young god can use you you can be well in age and god can still use you for example my great grandmother from my mom's side my mom's grandmother got saved at the age of 50 and because she was saved i am saved today because she gave her life to jesus my great grandmother from my mom's side prayed for my mom for her salvation and my mom got saved i believe because god heard the prayers from my great grandmother because my mom got saved my dad got saved because my dad got saved i am saved my parents taught me my parents showed me the truth about jesus and that i need him and so i prayed the prayer and i gave my life to jesus and i'm now saved because of how god used a woman in her 50s so you know what um praise god for his grace and this is it guys pray for your loved ones for their salvation no matter how old or young you are no matter how old or young your your siblings or parents or loved ones are whoever they are excuse me do not stop praying for them do not stop praying for your loved ones for their salvation amen hallelujah amen guys uh i finally got a job jordan wow lindsay welcome to the love i'm really glad to hear that praise god and i'm glad uh to hear that from you wow that's amazing thank you alwino for the rose there as well awesome beautiful scriptures yeah beautiful scriptures indeed hallelujah matthew 7 7 ask and it shall be given seek and ye shall find and knock and it shall be open unto you i love that scripture as well truth inspired so important so true that we gotta ask ask and you shall receive amen um uh all right today was singing maverick city song firm foundation i'm happy you are talking about it really sorry that's so cool wow yeah i i think i know that song as well that's so cool uh we have to be careful not to repeat our old wrong ways new ones yeah exactly yeah scarlet thank you for the 10 roses there just wrote the song down in my notebook i put my faith in jesus here's my hope and firm foundation yes amen good night uh, god bless you god bless you i will know god bless you i'm fighting hard to stop listening secular music that's good man but don't don't try and like force yourself to stop if if you feel like you are still drawn to it like you you can definitely cut off music and it will help okay but the way i came free from music is god gave me the choice and god will give you the choice right god will speak to you especially when you ask god god what is it in my life that i need to stop doing what is it in my life that needs to be cut off from my life lord deal with this and cut everything off from my life that doesn't belong and so then god will come to you and he will tell you okay son okay daughter uh will you are you willing to come away from this you see because before i used to really enjoy i used to really vibe to worldly music like beats music like future bass uh dubstep rhythm i used to really enjoy that that beat kind of music that you know really got your energy levels up and it was really like enjoyable but you know over the times the holy spirit was speaking to me very very uh gently very in a very kind and gentle way the holy spirit kept on speaking to me son get rid of it son get rid of it son move away from this you don't need this in your life he did it very in a very calm and gentle way 
And eventually I came to my senses and I said, you know what, Holy Spirit, you are so right. This music isn't doing me any good. So I give it to you and I give it away. And that is how I became free. Now I don't desire to listen to that music anymore. When I listen to that music, it's just like, no, what are you doing? I just don't want that in my life anymore. It's because your whole desire has shifted. Your mind has been transformed. Your mind has been renewed that no longer are you wanting the things that you wanted before because we're no longer slaves to sin but slaves to righteousness amen so cool so this is it right here what raven is talking about what i'm also talking about guys that i've noticed in my life as well raven says here there's a time i deleted all secular songs and i downloaded again in 2021 why did you download them again you are so wrong no you are not wrong you did what you thought was right but you did it in your own flesh in your own desires in your own ways you deleted them because you knew it was wrong to get rid of them and that you did that you thought it was good but the way it should have been dealt with instead of just deleting them keep the songs keep them there let it be available to you let 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 it be available to you because you should not have to force yourself to stay away from something you should be able to see something so tempting and say no i don't want it of course i'm not gonna say go look at nude photos and say i don't want you that is literally lusting that is literally inviting that in for example but rather like for example you know you have access to the internet you have access to listen to secular music at any given time that is never going to get away from you you can destroy your phone right now five years later someone's going to have a car radio and you're going to want to turn that secular music on and start indulging in that music again you have to deal with it from the root and the way you deal with that is you let god come in and take it from the roots think about this if you're pulling a weed from the ground and you just pull off the stalk but the roots are still in the ground the 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 weed is still going to grow back but if if you take the weed and you uproot it from the roots it has no root anymore it cannot grow anymore amen so kill it at the root and we the way we do this is it it's a spiritual cleansing it's a spiritual uprooting of the wounds in the soul as well like wounds in the soul are very deep the word of god says that the Bible, the Word of God, is sharper than any double-edged sword. It pierces through dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes on the heart. Let the Word of God bring deliverance to you by you submitting to the Word and the ways of Jesus. Jesus didn't say, get rid of sin and then abide in me. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. And when you do that, you'll produce good fruit. Amen. So it all comes down to abiding in Jesus, remaining in Jesus, being built on the word. And that is when you are building that firm foundation. That is when you are getting down to the root of the problem and you're uprooting it from the deepest point of your soul. It is being lifted out of your life from the deepest point in your soul. And that is where true freedom is found. And guess what? The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's a secret there's a secret okay um, I'm praying very hard to have mercy on me yeah God will have mercy on you but just pray and ask God to give you the strength to get rid of that secular music and in the right time you will just find yourself so free that you just no longer desire to to listen to secular music anymore it's just because it doesn't interest you anymore it's because you've given it to God and God has fought for you and he fights for you because he is your refuge you are not your own refuge you need jesus apart from jesus you can do nothing amen jesus is the vine and you are the branches you have to be connected to the vine you have to be connected to jesus amen Uh, how long did you go to Bible college for Jordan MCF um, I went to Bible college only for one year 
actually wanted to do second and third year Bible college, but um, there were no provisions for that. I don't, I didn't feel led to do second and third year Bible college just yet. I don't know if I'm still going to be doing that in the future or not. I suppose I'd like to, um, but it has to be, you know, it has to be where God is leading me. Um, because when, when I did first year Bible college, I had transport, I had payment, I had money for it, I had a bursary. I could even go on the camp. It was really, the whole year was really highly favored and provided for. But when it came to second year, I heard nothing. There were no provisions. Things happened, tough things happened. And I just couldn't do second and third year at that time. So, you know what? Um, and I was at peace with that. I knew that God was doing something that I was not ready yet for second year. But we'll see what happens. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope that answers your question, which I believe it does. And so let me see over here, guys. Um, all right. Good night to you, Florence. Yeah, God bless you so much. All right. Hallelujah, faith. Yeah, hallelujah. Welcome to the love. Continue to pray. God is always listening. Amen. I pray for son's salvation every day. That's awesome. And I agree with that prayer in Jesus' name for your son's salvation, MCF. In Jesus' name, let it be done. Amen. Uh, faith I'm in South Africa that's the country I was born in that's the country I'm currently staying in I haven't yet traveled to any other country um, so I've always been in this country was born here and born and raised and in the same city that I was born and raised in pretty much I feel that God wants me back in the church where I was rejected really Carol you know what just be guided by God um, if God is sending you back to that place even if you were rejected there if it is from god then you know you will see a turn for the better amen amen you are so right jordan about the vape jesus helped me from drug and alcohol addiction wow praise jesus sandra i love hearing the testimonies from you guys as well hi grace welcome uh i stopped all tv eight years ago and music one year ago really Wow, that's quite some time, MCF. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. Um, uh, it is a decision to th then next Holy Spirit will help you. It, it, it is a decision. Absolutely. Absolutely. The Holy Spirit brings you the truth and he shows you what is wrong. He convicts you of sin and then you have to decide. Amen. But yes, the decision does come first. And the decision that comes first is really just choosing Jesus. When you choose Jesus, then God will tell you what to do next. And then you decide again. So yes, as Sarah says, the decision comes first. But the decision to move away from something is already in you when you receive Jesus. Because when you commit your life to Jesus, you are making a choice to turn from the world to be pulled out from the world and everything that the world worldly people do all the sins of the world you are drawn out of you are pulled out of completely that's the first decision you make and then when the holy spirit convicts you of sin you need to um you need to be faithful to the decision you made by choosing to continue to stay away from worldly things and break the, those things off your life so yeah amen and there's no problem at all with you deleting videos and movies and that's all good sarah go ahead and do that i'm not saying that that's wrong but we see for example like raven he deleted all secular music but then he went back to it in 2021 for me i said i'm done with vaping and i gave it up because i knew it was wrong but i did it in the flesh and i did it because i thought it was the right thing to do but i still went back to it because i didn't give it to god I didn't surrender it to God. So sometimes if you're not free from something, it just means you haven't submitted to God. Now, in your case, Sarah, you know the right thing to do. You know that you should get rid of those movies. So you did that decision and it was easy for you to get free from that, I believe. And so you did the right thing. I'm not saying you did the wrong thing. And by all means, if you call it different, that's totally understandable. But what I'm saying is that um, the evidence of you being fully submitted to Christ with everything that you used to do is in your desire that you have. 
if you still desire to go back to those movies and videos then you obviously haven't yet fully submitted to god that's the same thing with like um some addictions that you may have had as a child if you don't deal with it spiritually if it is not spiritually uprooted then there's still going to be that desire later on in life satan is going to come and tempt you and you're going to fall back into it if you haven't yet dealt with the root of the problem but many times in your decision if you just choose to make that decision is because the holy spirit put it in your heart to make the decision then it will be uprooted so in your case sarah i know that you always are listening to the holy spirit you always are listening to him and that is very good i'm not saying you did it wrong um but many of us we don't listen to the holy spirit we do it in the flesh and that is when we uh, are doing it in the wrong way and that's when we find like we are not finding freedom like for example if you look at john bevere for example john bevere had a porn addiction for quite many years of his life and um i can relate to his story as well um and so it was a time where john bevere had um fasted for four days that he was only able to really speak to that spirit of lust and tell it to leave and it left him so he dealt with the root so what i'm really saying is that if you cut things off from your life in the wrong way it's basically like just sweeping it under the carpet it's still there it hasn't been uh, spiritually removed from your life how do we know if it's swept under the carpet or not it is in the evidence of your desires same thing with us as christ if you don't love people it's evidence that you don't truly have christ in you if you start loving people you just don't know why but you just have an affectionate passionate love for people to come to salvation it's because of jesus he that is in you um that you have that love that's why also god says god comforts us so that we can comfort others we will not be able to comfort others if we haven't first received comfort from god and you have done that sarah you have submitted your life to god you've submitted those movies and videos to the holy spirit and that is why you're free so you did it the right way but many of us who are not mature in the lord who have in the past like me done it in the flesh we swept it under the carpet we hope we hoped it went away we just hope it went away we didn't deal with it spiritually so for me like i had to constantly really uh rebuke the temptations of vaping because when i gave up vaping it doesn't mean i wasn't tempted anymore i was still tempted to go back to the vape but because my desire for god was so strong i moved on from that vape and it was easy for me it's so easy for me to now say there's no ways i'd ever want to go back to vape it's so easy for me to say that now because of how it was ripped away from me from the root amen and 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 sometimes it is a process so don't feel like if you if you feel like your prayers and and what you've done to cut off sin from your life if you feel like that hasn't worked don't be discouraged thinking that um you know that you are not free and that you cannot be free you go again but now when you go again you know more you have learned more and so now you have more revelation and wisdom and understanding on how to be free from something and so then therefore it's so powerful and you say you fasted and pray that is why you also became free from that sarah because you really dealt with it from the root and that is why you're free from that sarah which is awesome i really am glad to see that so yeah i'm sorry if there was a misunderstanding but you get what i'm saying what you're saying very true my brother amen glory to god a meditation the word so powerful the new creation realities amen sarah uh denver well, welcome to the live how are you brother god bless you too denver a uh, brother you have saved my relationship with christ you have kept me in god's plan god bless you you know what seth i don't take the glory for that i'm just a messenger that god has called me to do what i'm doing right now to speak to you guys about jesus about the word of god and i just praise the holy spirit for leading me in my words um scholar thank you for the 10 roses and for christoph for the three roses there as well um but yeah i'm really glad to hear that um glory to god for that um uh, seth that is amazing uh god bless you sarah thank you for being on the live i think i don't know if you left yet or not but yeah 
what is helping me be off my phone is taking walks talking to god it's amazing i feel more felt and that is really cool what you're saying sorry so what you can do instead of doing what you usually do that would be like uh, an addiction of some sort or a bad habit uh which basically is an addiction <laughs> then um replace that time with something else like for me i was really in a, in a vulnerable position always at night that's when satan knows i'm at my weakest is because um darkness rules the night kind of thing if you excuse me if you know what i'm talking about and so satan he tries to rule the night because of the darkness right and so god led me to spend time in worship before i go to bed and if i didn't spend time in worship it was very easy for me to submit to tempt to temptation to the lies of the enemy if i had not spent time with god so replace the time that you would usually spend like just chilling or just hanging around just hanging around <laughs> then uh use that time instead to worship to spend time in the word of god to pray and that is when you are submitting yourself to the holy spirit yielding to the holy spirit and his power comes through for you to overcome because god has made a way for you out of every temptation amen wow powerful hi k do you go on uh, every day what time rose yeah i usually like to do two live streams a day but i was busy earlier today as well just struggle to be able to get to the love during the day so there's only been an evening live tonight which starts usually at around 8 8 30 south african standard time today was a bit late because i had to finish an edit and get a video posted so i was quite late tonight i started like um almost two hours ago and it's already almost 11 p.m so i almost started at like nine close to nine uh, p.m at night south african standard time um all right uh god will come through in due time amen seth the lord freed me from watching soap opera really well you know what a lot of these things can be a problem in our lives you know amen uh, colossians 3 23 and whatsoever ye do do it heartily as to the lord and not unto men powerful stuff truth inspired amen uh, thank you lord for giving jordan the spirit to be able to explain yeah glory to god um carol and yeah capital s for holy spirit if you're referring to the holy spirit yeah the holy spirit i uh, cannot say or do anything apart from him i need the holy spirit as much as we all do and amen amen um have a good night brother jordan and all of you guys children god bless you raven uh amen norma uh I myself are hoping to give up vaping soon you know what Christoph man that is it's nothing it's really easy for God to 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 bless you with you know being away from su such things as vaping vaping cigarettes pornography alcohol all of these uh, gambling like these addictions it's really nothing for God to take away from us but it is based on our choices and commitment so Christoph you may not be able to be free today which i hope you can you can you can be free today you can be free right now but don't force yourself to let it rush into just disappearing keep your eyes focused on god keep on praying and keep on asking god for strength to do the right thing and through the power of christ you man will be completely free from vaping god showed me how to be free and it was simply just by communicating with God simply by just uh, listening to him when God spoke to me and God gave me an opportunity to make a right decision instead of neglecting those words by submitting to the voice of God that is how you find freedom and it might not take a day it might not take a week it might not take a month it might take a whole year as long as you remain focused and the quicker and the more submitted you are to to God the easier it will be for you to be free from from that so yeah um m b d uh thank you for the rose there fabs thanks for the heart me as well god bless um awesome uh, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of god i love that as well 
from 1 Corinthians 10 31 truth inspired great scriptures my brother awesome Jean what's up man thanks for the rose there um, uh, Philippians 4 6 here yeah, there it is be anxious for nothing and um, I feel like I'm always just wanting to be with Jesus all day every day think about him all day and that is great and let that desire turn into actions by praying under your breath separating a five minute tea break with Jesus doing those things really it blesses the father it pleases the father because you do it in faith you do it um, with a pure heart and it will bless you as well Jordan any advice on how to overcome and uh, substance substance addiction yes the same thing as everything else submit it to God give it to God and say Lord I don't want this in my life I choose to repent and renounce this addiction the sin take it out of my life Lord in Jesus name and you go through the process by daily on a daily basis you really keep on communicating with God back and forth and let God speak to you and you will find freedom also when you are more submitted to the Word of God and yes you can cut it off your life and you can definitely be free in that way but true freedom comes from when it's uprooted from deep within you so you need to search the deepest parts of within yourself and you need to decide if you want it or not what I've noticed I can so clearly see as well right now is that the reason we go back to sin is because we still have a desire for it deep somewhere somewhere deep in our hearts we know that it's wrong but somewhere deep inside of us we still want that and if we can give that to God if we say Lord you are my shepherd I shall not want you change that desire in your heart you, you say Lord this is really evil I should not be doing this it's not good for me so I choose to not want it when God can see that you are switching your desire from wanting that to hating it to really just getting away from it then you will see the freedom flourish in your life amen seems like I never want to do anything else that's amazing Rachel that is really amazing Matthew 17 21 Lizzie I don't know in exactly what that says but that's amazing let me see maybe that's a weird uh, but I just want to talk about him and to him constantly and then it's not weird in in the in the Church of Christ that is beautiful that is absolutely amazing that you just want to spend time with Jesus to the world that looks foolish that looks weird to the world but not to us as believers that is really good and I really uh, really want to encourage you to continue in that and never lose that keep that as a treasure cherish that because I've noticed in my life that nothing can really give you that peace and that joy except Jesus you know a sin and worldly things can give you temporal happiness but it never fills the void in your life Jesus always fills the void in your life so let me just check out Matthew 17 21 it says however this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting yeah so there are some spirits some demonic attack some spiritual things and, and addictions that are or, or, or um, diseases like illnesses or and it's from a demonic oppression um, some sometimes it doesn't come out but except by prayer and fasting and the reason why Jesus I believe says prayer and fasting is because of the lack of the faith of the people Jesus said oh you have little faith like they couldn't cast out the demon not because they were not uh, able to because they didn't have as much faith excuse me they they their faith level dropped a bit you know so yeah um cool yeah glory to god guys i uh, just want god to give me clear direction to where i should go been praying for so long that's good uh, rihanna and i just pray in jesus name for more clarity more sound of mind to you rihanna in jesus name more direction thank you holy spirit i pray that you'd guard her and lead her where you need her to go in jesus name amen keep trusting and keep waiting on the lord rihanna god will show you where to go what to do and he will provide where god leads he feeds amen 
please may pray for me i've been in a period of not knowing what to do with my life career wise there again it's a very similar situation as rihanna uh, lord we pray for k in jesus name for direction and guidance and protection and favor over k's life lord i pray as well like all anxiety all worries about the future i just pray that she would lay that down before you lord jesus lay that down at the cross at the feet of the cross uh, at the foot of the cross where um you father god will show her where you have called her to be in jesus name amen you know what i saw myself in a career of being a professional golfer and uh, i was really disappointed when i came to realize that that's not gonna be my career um not not because i didn't have the ability to become a pro golfer i believed without a doubt that i had more than enough talent skill and ability to become a pro golfer but it just was not god's plan for my life god had called me to do ministry instead and focus more on ministry than golf i can still play golf i still got a set of clubs in 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 the background as you can see i still enjoy golf i still play golf but it's not going to be my profession because god has a has another plan and god's ways are always best amen glory to god amen strength energy and guidance in jesus name amen amen hi could you pray for me i have a bad cold sorry to hear that um l dragon i'm sorry bro but yeah let's pray for l dragon guys father god we pray for l right now in jesus name for total healing and 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 we just come against this cold we rebuke this cold in jesus name Lord, we pray for relief to l we pray for um total recovery that you said father god that will lay the our hands on the sick and they will recover so we lay hands on l spiritually in the spirit right now we lay hands on him father god that you will touch him not not by our power not by might not by power but by you holy spirit that you would touch l bring him bringing him healing father that you receive the glory for it in jesus name amen amen god bless you l jesus loves you so much brother and that goes for all of you guys god loves you so much jesus is the way the truth and the life jesus loves you so much so yeah guys it's getting really late for me so i need to head out for now been live for more than a couple of hours and it's already almost 11 p.m for me as well um i believe everyone is everyone else in the house is already in bed so um yeah i'm gonna be having to leave for now guys but i just pray a blessing of your life in jesus name for more favor more guidance more protection more peace and faith to increase in your life and i pray god blesses you guys all in jesus name amen all right love you guys all see you again tomorrow for more bible reading we may do a live during the day as well um, i can't promise you on that but i'd like to do a live stream uh in the afternoon and in the evening but it may only be in the evening we'll just see how the day goes for me um if you took up golfing you couldn't still be a christian no well i could still be a christian of course i could still be a christian but i wouldn't be effectively being able to do full-time ministry if i was pursuing a career in golf so yeah uh blessed night to everyone thank you jordan be blessed you too sorry god bless you yeah glory to god rachel god bless you rachel and a blessed night to you and everyone amen that's amazing carol god bless you so much thank you father for blessing your people thank you father uh, my father does everything i'm doing and i'm make me very confused mad frustrated what should i do now sam <laughs> it sounds uh, like a situation that's not common not usual but just give it to god really and just pray about it ask god to bring peace to the situation i pray as well for peace over that situation in jesus name um you know if things are frustrating you sometimes it has to be just dealt with with peace and 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 with love as well just respond in love to your dad respond in love to him respond in a peaceful way um uh, don't let frustration get to you but give it to god and yeah uh god bless you seth and everyone guys all right adios amigos gloria de dios and i'll see you guys all tomorrow again all right
uh let me just see here. i in movies and was gonna be an actor now i'm in the ministry god's plans not ours he's got us wow and the fact that you would give up your own desires and your own wants in your career for god it really is rewarding at the end of the day when you are doing that you are laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal you're doing the work for God and for his glory and you don't do it for the rewards you do it because you love him amen praise God and you will be rewarded nonetheless though a scholar hallelujah amen central time do you know what time so Rose just search out South African standard time it will give you uh, the SAST time uh, that will be um, comparable to what time you are familiar with yeah how do i give my frustration to god now sam it's simply by just communicating with god and saying lord take away this frustration i'm sorry for getting frustrated i'm sorry for being impatient i'm sorry for being annoyed father god i repent i renounce this and i give it to you just by faith just by doing that in faith you will see god will bring peace to the situation and he will make a way for you he will give you the guidance and direction on what you need to do next all right well that's it for tonight guys okay god bless once again and uh peace to all of you remember jesus loves you so much jesus is the way the truth and the life no one goes to the father except through jesus and god has a plan for you do not be afraid god has a plan for you amen all right good night guys lots of love to all of you in jesus name amen and amen